Today's topic of discussion is controlling SSL and SSH with the Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall. We'll spend a few minutes going through a few slides and then we will skip into the product UI and we'll show you some of the features that allow you to control SSL and SSH. First thing that needs to be considered is whether or not SSL and SSH are being used as a protection mechanism or as an evasive tactic. From a protection standpoint, we see many common applications now moving to HTTPS as a default. Twitter earlier this week announced that they were turning on uh, HTTPS by default. Earlier this year, January of 2011, um, both Gmail and Facebook added HTTPS support. So it allows you to uh, provide a certain amount of privacy for the users. We also see the Electronic Frontier Foundation uh, driving end users to um, require application developers to enable HTTPS by default. Unfortunately, we also see these tools, SSL and SSH, being used as, as an evasive tactic, both by uh, employees and users, as well as cyber criminals. They are uh, commonly used to uh, hide the activity, so uh, enabling SSL is, is fairly easy to do. And we also see tech-savvy employees using SSH to evade controls within an organization. It's, uh, it's a tool, SSH is a tool that is commonly used by support and tech uh, uh, and IT departments. Uh, so it's very common to be found on many organizations. We see it when we do our um, traffic analysis. We see SSH probably in the 98th uh, percentile range. So nearly every organization shows it, yet uh, smart employees have figured out a way to set up an SSH server on their home machine. Uh, they can um, then uh, establish a, a secure tunnel to their home machine. And from there, they can jump off and do whatever they want uh, on the internet. Um, so, and, but the unfortunate thing is that it leaves a hole back uh, to the uh, corporate environment if the end user's home machine gets compromised. From a statistic standpoint, um, the most recent usage and risk report that we published in May of 2011 shows that a whopping 41% of the applications uh, that we found can use SSL or hop ports. So if you look at the statistic here, so 171 can hop ports. If we eliminate that statistics, you still have um, about 250 of the applications or thereabouts that are capable of using SSL. Many of them, as you see in this statistic, are using SSL on non-standard ports. So 215 of them can use 443 or more commonly other ports. Uh, so that's a very, very interesting statistic in terms of the use of SSL on non-standard ports. SSH, as I mentioned, is used very often, but it doesn't really consume very much bandwidth, um, so it doesn't show up in the bandwidth statistics. In order to control SSL and SSH, you need uh, a different form of evaluating traffic. App ID looks across all ports for all applications and all traffic, so no matter what port you're looking at, we can determine whether or not the traffic is SSL or SSH, and then can enable selectively the appropriate policies. From an SSL perspective, we use the man-in-the-middle man in approach to um, uh, open up the traffic, uh, identify the applications within the SSL uh, tunnel, and then inspect it, re-encrypt it, and deliver it to its destination. SSH control is a little bit different. We use it to enforce native usage, native usage being SCP, S, FTP, and shell access, while the other uses of um, SSH can be quickly uh, identified and then uh, denied. Now let's take a few moments and look at the SSL and SSH control mechanisms within the Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall. Application Command Center 
also known as ACC, is one of the features within the Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall that can show an administrator that SSL is in use and enable them to learn a little bit more about the traffic traversing the network that might be using SSL. As you can see here, we see a, a bank of traffic that is labeled SSL. But realistically speaking, there are many applications, as we saw earlier, that can use SSL. If we look at Gmail, for example, Gmail is one of those applications that is capable of using SSL. Yet, if you drill down in, so if you drill down into Gmail, you can see the different ports it's using, the characteristics, and then more importantly, relative to SSL, you can see the depends on applications listing here. You'll see that SSL and web browsing are both applications that are um, that Gmail depends on. So that's an important component when you take into account the uh, policy control uh, relative to Gmail. The other elements that you see rel uh, here are all the different users, both source and destination, as well as the different policies and different uh, security zones that Gmail traffic is traversing. So from here, you would then go and now that you've learned a little bit more about Gmail, the fact that it uses SSL and also uses web browsing, you can move into the policy tab and set an appropriate policy to control the Gmail traffic. So the security policy is, the, um, is where you would go to set the policy that it would allow you to um, enable the use of Gmail for a particular group of users or all users source, destination, user, or all elements that are commonly set in a firewall policy that becomes very, uh, what becomes very different is over here where we'd set the uh, application policy, for example, for a, an application such as um, Gmail. You'll see that here's a webmail file blocking policy that's already been created for us. Now we would move into the decryption policy, and there are three, three different types uh, three or four different types of policies that you would set in the decryption um, screen. The first one, uh, and it's a good example, is right here at the top, is that you want to set a policy that does not decrypt certain applications that employees might be using, um, such as financial services. They might be managing their 401k or their stock option grants. And then the uh, other one is health and medicine. They might be managing their benefits or um, performing some doctor and medical services while they're at work. So you want to set a policy that does not decrypt those particular sites. Then uh, as you move down again, you would set a policy that decrypts SSL in general. And that means that you're going to be able to automatically decrypt applications such as Gmail that, will, um, that might use SSL. And once that traffic is decrypted, it will pass through, the traffic is sent through the security policy we already took a look at earlier. And if it passes that policy check, uh, it is re-encrypted and then delivered to its destination. So it's a combination of elements that are used to selectively decrypt and control SSL uh, traffic. SSH is slightly different, as I mentioned. You use, we look inside of SSH to determine its native usage or non-native use, and then we can make policy decision based on that. Uh, the native use, again, is uh, SCP, secure, FTP, and um, um, shell access. Uh, anything else can be considered non-native, and then you can implement an appropriate policy that uh, controls SSH. Finally, we can go into the Monitor tab. The Monitor tab is uh, where you could go in and look for a different, uh, the different applications that are using SSL but might not be using port 443. This gives you an example of the different types of applications that, uh, and the different ports that the applications can use um, even though they're using SSL, which is supposed to be traversing port 443. Again, this hammers home the point that we said earlier in that applications uh, like SSL that uh, don't always go across port 443. Um, and to drill down into the additional details of these applications, you would just merely hit the application details, and you see that this is probably an encrypted 
site to an educational um, institution, um, and, and indeed that's what it is. Gives you a little bit more information about the SSL usage. That concludes our discussion of SSL and SSH. Uh, thanks for listening.